Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chrissy from Solstice ATR. I hope everybody's doing great. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter, as well as Discord. We use adaptive algorithm for trading for short term, mid term, and long term. Remember, we're not a broker dealer. Past performance doesn't indicate our future results or anyone's. Use at your own risk. And data may not be copied. Check the website policy. If you'd like to copy it, you can reach out to us. First of all, let's break it down into a couple of things that I want to pay, have you guys pay attention to. In this slide, I said, hey, we have the highest inflation in the last 30 years due to our American administration. Can this market continue till end of the year and we get a Christmas rally? Or do we have some questions regarding this market? One of them, we have to have a plan and a strategy to keep an eye on the technology sector and large cap growth, such as the biotechs, the ones that moved very high. So in order to have a solution for inflation, we have to look at the financial sector, material products, energy, gold, value play in stocks instead of staying with the large caps. I went back in history till 1995, looking at an RSI, resistance and support indicator at the bottom. The algo at the bottom is ours, it has divergence in it. But I went as far as 19 to 2017 to take a look at each event that has happened in the market when the RSI got extended above 75 to 80 and came back from the mean to get a small correction, then we continue higher. This is the 2018-17 uh, uh, correction. The hand, we had the 2018-19 correction because the RSI got above 75. We came back to the mean at around the 15-20 and reversed back up. Then we had the COVID uh, situation and we fell back down. In September, October, no November, we had the RSI in a similar situation, got extended, we consolidated here, then we continued higher. And now we have three higher lows in the RSI. If I draw a channel from this peak to this one, to this one, we are in a downtrend. If this RSI gonna continue higher, that means the market will continue till end of the year going higher. If not, it will reverse from the mean, come back to at least the 50% back in the RSI. This is showing the SPX, which is the Fortune 500, NASDAQ 100, the Russell and the Dow, five here today because I had to compress it to show the range a little bit tighter where we came from the mean. So one more slide we'll go through. This is showing the SPY, I did not use the SPX. These are the readings in the RSI from 2017 to 2021, where the peaks were and the resets. The peaks were, and we got a reset. The peaks were, then we got a reset. The consolidation and the reversal from the peak. We had a minor one here in uh, April, May, which was very minor. And in June, July, this is the reset that we had. We retested the July low almost and we continued higher do we continue to break the 61 fib extension from last year's annual high to the 78 or do we come back from the mean to the 116 simple moving average we are far away from the 200 sma these are the conditions that were met during that period of time for the short term we can have a down move around five to two percent an average three month drawdown is about 7%, and a six months drawdown average is about 1%. But overall market can continue higher even while we have inflation in place. So let's break it down one by one. Here we have the S&P, NASDAQ, and the Dow. On the daily, you can see that last move from high to low. We got a 6.3% dump. Then we take the high from the low here to this peak here. We had a 9% drawback up. Then we had a 10% gain from the peak. But from last week's range, from the low to here, we are 9.6% retraced. 
but we're still away from the 18 simple moving average, the 50, and the 116 simple moving average, and there's our 200. This is the breakdown of this channel that we had here, and we continued higher. So let's pay attention to them one by one. I will start first by using the small cap, the RTY, the futures e-mini contract. I, we were range bound from February till almost November of this year. And eventually we got the breakup. We looked above, we consolidated and came back in. This is the expected measured move on the Fibonacci using the time in relationship to volume profile. And we continued higher. And we broke the 161. We got to the round the 150. I mean, the 178, there's a 261 here. On the weekly bar, we retraced back down, but came back to the 50, but we closed right above the 61.8. We have to clear the 38% to continue higher. Let's see if the 61, the 2400, 2404 holds the Russell in relationship to the 18 simple moving average. Let's take a look at now the Dow Joe Industrial Average. You can use the DIA. The dollar sign DJI or the YM, which is the E mini contract. We can see we came out of a move back up and continued higher. This is the expected move to 61. If I add the 0 to 38, we almost reach 100% of the move back up in the Dow last week, but we consolidated back in to the 18 simple uh, moving average in the channel that we broke. The, that channel is very important on the breakout. We have to hold it in order to continue higher. If we break down, pay attention to the 50 simple moving average in that Dow. Let's take a look at now the NQ, the NASDAQ 100. We can see that the NASDAQ 100 after the reset, I do not have a drawn channel from up here. We can draw a channel going from this point to this one here, or we can do it from here, which I would like to do from this area here. To this one here at least we know where our channel is our support we are in a wedge continuing higher this is our monthly fibonacci this is the purple color and the weekly from monday through friday's low which was the wednesday this is the thursday and the friday push higher and we close right on the 38 or the 61.8 in the nasdaq let's take a look at the es which is the e-mini contract it's the spy or the SPX, which is the large contract, or the VOO in some of the, you know, the ETF areas where you can look at the Fortune 500 companies. So we can see we are in a continuous uptrend. We have this smaller linear regression channel, and I do have that one because I broke it down to a little bit more detail. We do have this gap here. We do have this gap. We tested the prior. Uh, July low, but not all of it. And we reverse, we created a shoulder. This is the head, this is the other shoulder. And eventually we broke out of here. We have this gap in the overnight and we continued higher. We are holding the 18 simple moving average in a small linear regression channel here. Let's see if we stay up to continue higher for the Christmas rally in the backside of this channel, or do we fall back to the 18 and eventually the backside of the 38, which was the prior high in. September. Let's take a look at now the uh, BTC and I'll come to gold and silver. BTC, as we can see on the daily chart, it consolidated, it created a flag here, looked up, broke out, and came back to retest the 18 simple moving average. These gaps are usually in the overnight because futures do trade in the international, but I do highlight the overnight action in relationship to the futures and the commodities that are traded here. These are, this is why I have these gaps here. We looked up, we tested the 50% FIB measured move expectation in Bitcoin. We basically, I can consider this as 67, 68, uh, 000 as a double top we looked up here and the 60 once we lost the 68 900 i said to everybody be careful this is going to be a short you can go look at my twitter feed about a week ago a couple of days ago i called this trade and i said be careful we can come back to the 18 simple as well as the partial gap because there's a little, little bit bigger gap in here this te this test came back in retested the 18 and bounced off it do we hold this channel in order to continue higher 
or do we come back to the mean on the weekly chart Fibonacci and this one's supposed to be in gray area what we do we edit the property I usually have these Fibonacci's in gray for the weekly purple for the monthly expected move and the annual in color fibs so let's go and take a look at GC which is gold you can look at GLD we can look at uh, GC or we can look at the GOLD, some of the ETF funds out there to help you recognize where gold. We were in consolidation for quite a while. We can clear the 1805, 1810 area. And eventually this week, we eventually and last week got a breakout and we're looking to the monthly Fibonacci extension, which is the expected measured move from low to high, the 161 on it. But if we do lose, the 57, 1857, 1852, be careful of gold because it can retrace back in and retest the 61 weekly Fibonacci on the charts. I'm not biased to being short. It is an inflation hedge. We have to pay attention to the consumer products, energy, inflation hedge such as gold in order to continue higher because the cost of things are going a little bit higher than normal as expected. So if I zoom in this area, we can see we created that consolidation. We retested the channel. We had this old linear regression channel. We broke up and we continued higher. If I do it on a three-year weekly, you can see it on the chart why there was a breakout in gold. You can see we were in a linear regression channel since the 1680 area. We had that 16, uh, 16200 area and eventually we broke up. We kept grinding up and down between this linear regression channel and eventually we broke up we created a shoulder a head a shoulder and this is the breakout of it if i consolidate this into a rounded bottom and a cup on the daily it shows you the cup and handle in it without these channels if i go back to the daily six month time frame we go daily we go instead of a yearly we go six months out Instead of weekly, we go to the daily chart and we push OK. We can see that the rounded bottom, the cup of it, the breakout of this area, and we took off higher. Pay attention to the backside of this channel, the 52 area, 57, as well as the 35. In case it does come back in this area, I would be a buyer again to look higher since gold is starting to round again. Let's take a look at SI that's in silver. I don't have Fibonacci. You can see that the, this is the cup. This is the head of it or the shoulder, the head, and this is the shoulder. If silver is going to continue, we have to clear the 200 SMA and the prior breakdown of this candle to get back to the $26 range as a hedge in inflation. Let's take a look at AAPL. I'll do some ETFs at the end. Apple is in consolidation. You can see it. It's range bound, trying to make a decision which way it's going to go. If I take a look at Amazon, I'm going to the tech sectors to show you what we can see. You can see where it is in relationship to the earning report. Tried to recover on Friday. It had a nice little reversal back up. If we take a look at uh, Facebook, Facebook is setting in a cup and handle in relationship to that open cone. If it clears the 345, 350 area, you would expect, you know, partially to fill this partial gap up here. And Facebook, I'm not biased to Facebook. I don't trade it anymore. If you are interested, keep an eye on it in case it does break out the 50 simple moving average on the daily. Let's take a look at Google L. You can see Google L is on an annual high as well. Pay attention to the channel. Take a look at NFLX. I'm just mentioning a couple of uh, stocks to show you the tech sector, the NASDAQ 100 part of the S&P because they are at their extreme and high. Tesla had reset a little bit compared to the other companies. And I had called last week Tesla on a short. I said, be careful of it when it got that rounded top up here. I go to everybody, be careful. This candle is opening uh, below the close uh, of the open of the other candle and the close of it. Be careful, we may have a reversal back down. This is the monthly expected measured move to the upside. It tested the 61.8, eventually fell back down to a thousand area. That 1050 is very important. If it doesn't do the 1055, 1060, pay attention to the backside of this gap here, which is the island from the earning report and the breakout in Tesla, which can be coming back to this area that I see in Tesla unless things do change.
let's take a look at uh, BA. Ball, oops, I put the wrong one. Oops, BA. You can see Boeing is in consolidation in a symmetrical triangle. You can see that channel from the top. There's one from here. We are in consolidation as long as it stays above the 218 area. I'm okay with Boeing if it breaks the 225 and the 116 simple moving average. I'm expecting it to reclaim the 232 and the 235 area in Boeing. If it loses the 218, be careful of it because you can end up on the backside of this consolidation back here around the 210. So that's Boeing. We can do LMT after the earning report. It's been in that gap down. I'm watching to see if there's going to be consolidation of the week on the chart to see if it does make a move. Um, let's take a look at uh, some of the uh, ETFs. I'll start with XLK, which is the technology sector, such as the NASDAQ. XLV, you can see it right there. XLE, which is the energy sector. You can start to see it's consolidating, starting to move. XLF, the financial sector as well in in the uh, ETFs. I'm mentioning these so that way you can guys take a look at those levels not with no biased opinion to either side you trade what the charts offer you without being biased we can take a look at the xl i don't know if i did the f or not i'll do the y as well that is the f x l y oops x l y you can see where it is in relationship this is the consumer discretionary x l Industrial, we'll do the industrial first. And I will do one more. You can see where it is, XLP, I believe. That's actually the consumer staples. We can start to see there's a change in trend. And in the different sectors, they're trying to do catch up, pay attention to them. We can take a look at as well, VUG, Vanguard. It's at the high. We can take a look at VOO, similar to the SPY as well. You can see the SPY. These are all the same different sectors. Pay attention to them. If I take a look at the IEI, the short-term treasury bond, the, the three to seven year, you can see it. If you look at the IEF, this is the five to seven year, the seven to 10, I should say. You can see where it is in relationship to inflation, the TBT and the TLT. I'm just doing the inverse of it to show you where we are in relationship to inflation. I want you to pay attention to the VIX slash VX. It has created an annual low. I did not anchor these fibs a couple of days ago and I wasn't able to remove them. Let me remove those Fibonacci's from the week before. Remove drawing. We can move this weekly uh, channel here, um, activate. And I usually move my FIPS to the right to know we're in relationship. This was trying to break above the 20. The 200 SMA on the daily has been a little bit resistance in the last three weeks. We are in a symmetrical triangle. If I take a look at it on a weekly chart, and I put the weekly chart up, we can see from the COVID-19, we are trying to make an annual low for the year. Has not made it yet. This is the monthly expected measured move. We have that $16 range that's very important and that $20 to the upside in case we do break out, then things may change. Pay attention to the VIX. And if I go back to the daily chart, <clears throat> six months out or one year, you can see in relationship to where the VIX is on the daily chart, how it's been getting higher lows every time it goes up, comes back down, getting a lower low, gets a higher low. Come back in, gets a high. This one was a double, almost like a double top. And eventually it fell back down. This area is very important. You can see that 1590 area here. It created uh, last month an annual low for the year. It gapped up because of the change in the contract. Fell back in, looked above the, almost to the 20. Fell back in. I'm paying attention to the VIX. If it loses the 50 Fibonacci expected measured move. I'm looking for the 61 and eventually the 1575. If it turns here and clears the 18 back to the 1995, uh, things do change the trend, then the sectors will change. Pay attention to what the market offers you. Let's go back last to the ES. 
we can see here ES, how it is in relationship to where the market is on the annual charts. Pay attention to the fibs and the levels. Least, I will do one more on BTC and the relationship to all the markets because this is people thinking of it as a hedge regarding inflation. We do have that rounded bottom. We created that cup. We broke up and we're creating a rounded bottom here. On the shorter time frame, this is a very important area that the 62,000 does hold in this gap in order to continue higher. If you end up losing it because this is the channel where you broke out of, I left it here on purpose. I should change this one here. We'll go to the daily. We can do 45 days, four hour chart. I can zoom in from here where the low is in relationship to this area. We can connect this dot here in a channel. To the slow here so we know we are in a linear regression up channel this was basically broken we no longer need it remove the drawing we have this up channel rounded cup and handle this is the roundness this is a shoulder this is a double bottom then we eventually we broke out of that symmetrical triangle on this gap you can see the gap was here in the overnight the gray area is the gap we looked up we double topped we fell back then if this is considered the cup inverted cup like upside down and this is the handle of it if i do lose this gap in this channel i would look for the backside of here and eventually the 200 sma and the 61.8 which is the triple bottom from here but if it does reverse and clear the 50 sma and the 38.2 or the 61.8 here then we can go back to, off to the races to the other side of the fence pay attention to what the charts offer you have no bias trade what's given to you. Hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you on our Discord, or you can DM me. Take care. Over and out.